Good evening guys, welcome to another episode of Luke's Garage uh, and today we're going to talk about limit switches and my quest for perfection or close enough to it. So as standard the Shapiko 3 comes with limit switches uh, or homing switches uh, and essentially what that means is that when you start the machine up you have to home it which means it will send each axis back to a starting point so if you ever need to return back to another point or a datum on a job, you can accurately do that time and time again. Now, I say that the Shapiko 3 comes with them. It does if you bought it in 2016 or seven, or yeah, early 2016, I think. Uh, but before that, it didn't actually come with them. So they're an additional option. Um, and my machine actually never came with them. Uh, granted, I bought it a little bit later on, but it was just one of those things. So this is absolutely not a criticism of what was supplied or is supplied with the machine. It's just a case of I didn't have them, so I went down the DIY approach. Now, I started my journey with micro switches, and this is one of the original ones I had on. As you can see, it's pretty bloody small. It's a tiny little micro switch, uh, and it just triggers. Now, this would have been great from an accuracy point of view and size point of view, if I could have attached it to the machine. Uh, they're so small I couldn't find a way of mounting them uh, accurately and reliably with the tools I had at the time. Anyway, needless to say, as you can see, it's been chopped off and I moved away from that. Following that, I went to slightly larger micro switches and went with nice long levers. And I thought, oh, this would be a good idea. Nice long lever, easy to trigger it. However, um, a lot of my work in involves uh, quite a lot of precision to sort of 0.1 mil, um, possibly more than that in some cases. Um, and just having that arm which bends slightly uh, really actually affected the accuracy of these switches, so they came off. Um, now, prior to me actually fitting those, I really wanted to use uh, Hall Effect magnetic sensor switches, and I ordered them very early on in the year. I ordered a set of three of these, as you can see, fairly big old switch. Uh, but essentially when a magnet comes there, it will light up and it triggers a switch. Now this was an awesome idea, I thought all oh, these are great, but they require a 5 volt power source. Um, and at the time, I had not played with the Shapiko control board. I hadn't gotten used to um, really messing around with my machine or modifying it. So to be honest, it was a bit scary, so I never actually fitted these uh, till probably about 4 months ago, maybe a bit less. I thought, oh, these look really good. Uh, you know, there's no contact, you can use magnets and they can be mounted quite easily. However, I found a, a real issue with them. And really what it was, is it was fine if you mounted them so they touched like that. However, if on my machine, I, I couldn't always mount them like that. I think it was on the um, X axis. I couldn't find a way of mounting it so the magnet would touch there. Uh, so I mounted it so it came across sideways. I found the X axis was always off by anywhere between sort of 0 0.1, 0 0.5, even up to a millimeter. So as the magnet would go across, it would uh, sense it in a different place. So I thought, well, that's, that's no good to me. And what I really wanted, I thought, was these proximity switches, non-contact and non-magnetic, so true proximity switches, which detect the uh, alloy or metal. So I ordered some of these, and these I was told would work. Looks the same, it's got a nice light on it, it's exact same profile and size. The model number is a BN-10, dash for, sorry, SNOP, SNO4-P, and it's a 10 to 30 volt switch. Now, this would not work off a five volts power supply, which is on the control board. And my control board being 2.4, does not have a 12 volt supply. So I tried a step down converter and it wrecked havoc with a control board. It just was not having it. Um, it would cause disconnects, it would cause loads of issues. So they never even got fitted. You can see the plug, uh, but I ordered four of these, or sorry, five of these. I couldn't even fit one of them. However, I didn't want to go back to my trusty uh, Hall magnetic sensor and try and make up brackets because I just wasn't enamored with it. Um, so what I did, I actually went and tried to find some more proximity switches and I managed to find some. So this is the proximity switch I went with. Uh, I can't remember the model, but I will link it. Here you can see it's yellow. 
it's of similar dimensions to the uh, blue ones. So as you can see there, it's about the same sort of length and width. However, it's significantly uh, uh, shallower. Now I've got these ones and the reason I went for these is because I think they're between uh, 10, sorry, six and 10 volts or six and 12 volts. So a much lower tolerance on its voltage. Um, again, it's got a light, so when it actually gets triggered, the light goes on and you can see when it's being triggered. Now, I had to make up my own brackets for these to fit. Um, so just a quick walk around the machine to show you those. So my Z axes, I've got a simple switch, which is triggered by the, uh, the spindle mount. On the X axes, I actually opted to go uh, bit more creative and just used a, a little bit of hot glue on that and it's nice and secure and then on the y-axis I built up and designed my own bracket which screw mounts onto the thing. Uh, I've also done it to avoid my brushes which clean my v-wheels. Now I will post the design files for those at this later today so you can have a look at that x-axis or sorry y-axis uh, file but what I think is really important is just to see the machine homing so I've got it set up. Um, I mean, granted, I appreciate this isn't the most interesting um, uh, thing to see, a machine homing, it's, it's fairly boring, we've all done it before, uh, but just to show you the fact they work and they're, they're, they're fairly decent. You'll have to excuse all the cabling. I'm going for a project to install drag chains, uh, which again, uh, I didn't receive as part of my machine and I'm not happy with standard ones, so I'm getting some custom made. So here we are, I'm just going to home the machine. And as you can see, it just homes nicely, nice and smooth, no hassle. Uh, and just quickly on the point on the reason why homing is so important. I mean, if I home the machine now, it offsets it by five millimeters either side, which is absolutely fine it's, it's to my requirements. If I start that machine and, and run a program, unless I start over here or right at the front of the wasteboard, it determines where I start based on where it previously homed. You know, it's essentially the machine coordinates and setting the zero point. Now, if that zero point changes every time, so does your tool, your, your program start because it's not repeatable. Uh, and that was the issue I was having with all my other limit switches or homing switches. It wasn't repeatable, so I had to change it. Anyway. Thanks for watching guys, I'll post a link to the uh, switches I purchased and also my Y-axis bracket, so if you want to make one up you can, um, happy to take any, any questions on these uh, and if you fancy fitting them, let me know, happy to walk you through how that was done and where I pulled the 5 volt supply off. Thanks for watching, have a good night, cheers.